Oh, it's been a busy day and it's time for a full tour of the allotments. Uh, that's my allotment, Steve's, and Debbie's allotment and Jenny's allotment. And God, there's a lot been going on. Finally, after months really of blistering heat, we had a few cool days and I had the energy to uh, get stuck into the allotment again. So whilst it's been a bit neglected really over the last uh, well, a month or so, uh, and finally started to move it forward a bit. So I'll show you what we've been up to, and a lot of what we're doing is preparing now for um, for the autumn and for winter. Um, so yeah, and I'll show you some of the low lights because we've had a few issues, uh, but we've had a few highlights as well. So I'll try and uh, highlight those as we go around, and I'll try and not waffle on quite as much and uh, get it done as quickly as possible. All right, I'll get on. So I'm in the polytunnel and my little catch crop of carrots seem to be doing pretty well. Um, they're all knocked over at the moment because they're just being watered. Celery getting a bit eaten, but um, not quite sure by what. I haven't found anything eating it, but you can see from the leaves that something is going on. And the French beans are doing splendidly. They're loving it under there. My cropping bench is doing okay uh, sorry cropping bench seedling bench uh, a lot has been planted I just did a little bit of a harvest today and uh, so these are the sapo kifi off one plant not a great harvest so I'm going to leave those in for a while this is the last of my um, charlottes and i'll pop a little video snippet in there to show you where those were harvested from uh chilies are all doing nicely now coloring up quite well and the peppers are enjoying it outside and uh, seem to be thriving cucumbers of course are still doing great we just keep picking those every day uh, the gherkins are not doing as well inside um, it would have been better probably planting those outside. Tomatoes are great. We're getting plenty of tomatoes now, so uh, we're keeping up with uh, demand finally. All the salad mixes have got tomatoes in them now for everybody. Um, look at the trumpuccinos. These are doing beautifully. And uh, they are quite long. And Debbie loves these. Um, the benefit, let me just show you on this one here, is that only this bit here has got seeds. So they're like a squash, um, a bit like a courgette, I suppose. Uh, but that whole neck there is seedless and really gorgeous. And you can still scoop the seeds out from here. So they're just extremely prolific. Um, and unlike a courgette, that they basically just elongate and so you know they don't grow into marrows like a courgette does um, they just get bigger um, so that's a little bit better uh, what else yeah still loads more tomatoes um, yeah we finished all of the uh, sweet corn and despite some people saying well how's it going to pollinate in a polytunnel well, it pollinated just fine. They were fantastic. Much loved by everybody who ate them. And that's pretty much it. Just a few more um, peppers out here. And there's a container full of New Zealand spinach. Started in a container so that we can move it uh, inside uh, later on in the season, uh, you know, in September, October time not quite sure you know what the best time to start some of these plants are for winter har well it won't be won't survive into winter but late autumn harvests and um, i'm guessing i started this one a little bit early so my runner beans in a pot have done amazingly i'm so pleased with those got a really lovely early crop and i will be emptying that pot next week and replanting it for late runner beans because we really like runner beans so here's a quick overview 
of the plot. Just let me pause for a second. Sorry, the uh, phone ran out of battery power then. Uh, yeah, so there's an overview of the plot with the polytunnel here. Um, yeah, salads, salads. And I'm very pleased now with the uh, this next, this is my third succession of um, calabrese so really pleased with that and I'm particularly pleased with the fact that they're all at slightly different stages so uh, this is an unintended succession so that's really good um, some of these lettuces as you can probably see these outer leaves are really struggling this is just the heat and uh, so these will all be wasted uh, unfortunately but uh, these little gem are doing pretty well some more in there. The uh, beets, golden beets, have got a little bit of rust, but not to worry because the beets under there are, are in excellent quality. The leeks now are fantastic. All of these uh, baby leeks that I put in, which I interplanted with the lettuces, had no effect on the lettuce crop, but uh, are giving me a lovely crop of uh, baby leeks. And I've probably got about 40 of those so that's really nice maybe a bit more actually because I've got some more there um, the sweet potatoes are doing pretty well quite pleased with those so far a little catch crop of uh, tomatoes in here uh, all of this will obviously be out uh, in September time um, when uh, these are replaced with my autumn crops some more calabrese here just a little bit behind so again that's a nice succession going on there Got some more beetroot here more beetroot here more beetroot here plenty of beetroot this year spring onions and I'm experimenting a lot with spring onions this year because I, I really want to keep spring onions going all through the year for me they're an essential part of my salad mixes uh, tomatoes everywhere I'm sure if you've seen one of my previous videos here's all my um, onions in the, in the onion drying house they're doing very nicely so I've just cleared this bed uh, this was the onion bed and in here we've put um, shard and spinach beet uh, this will be covered because shard um, and spinach beet don't really do that well over winter here without a little bit of protection that protection will probably go on in November this is my catch crop of uh, brassicas uh, and basically whenever I've got some spare brassicas I just pop them in here and see what we get and we've got some beautiful red cabbages here some lovely savoys and uh, they're holding well because it's hard to get through them all not many people eating cabbages at this time of year all of my peas on my pot are now up and they've all been replaced by runner beans i need to remember to get those tied in because we're going to have some high winds soon carrots these are this is a carrot bed here and that's a carrot bed there I've got one more carrot bed and we've just harvested those carrot beds down there and we've just planted one last bed of nants in there which theoretically you can plant in August and get a crop so we'll see how that goes and more beets and purslane here and the main New Zealand spinach bed over there a few more beets and I've just taken the tops off these beets just uh, so that I can see them and when I see them I realise I've got to pick them and so we're eating more beets I've also popped in some more beets here you might wonder why we have so many beets well we feed 20 people from these allotments and uh, beets are a very popular crop okay let's get on to Debbie's plot Actually, while we're walking, just have a quick look. I've trained and pruned my cherry tree there. 
this little flower border is looking really pretty. I'm very pleased with this at the moment. It's going to look even better. It's our open day uh, on the 11th and I will pop in uh, a little poster with the details of the open day. And so we're nearly at Debbie's plot now. This is where we get our water from. And uh, this has proved invaluable because water is in scarce supply here. So we have a scarecrow competition and uh, Debbie's got her scarecrow which is uh, wearing its raincoat because it's going to rain tomorrow, thank goodness. But Debbie's plot is looking extremely lush. Some beautiful kale rebore here. Just a little bit of uh, white fly damage now. Sweet corn. This is very nearly ready. Some collets. Her bed doing very nicely now. Another bed of uh, New Zealand spinach. And then the last of our peas at that end and that end. In fact, I might pick some of those before I go. And some more winter beans there. This is doing very well. Debbie's scarecrow is votes for women. In fact, she's just kind of put plots for women there uh, as a bit of a fun change. But it's to commemorate uh, the suffragette movement and we've got a nice brassica bed some beautiful um, kale here it's very tender some more collets and some broccoli and this w will be uh, a spring broccoli still loads of black currants on here which we've left for uh, a neighbour but she hasn't uh, come and picked any yet, so I think we might end up having to pick them. Lovely crop of pears here. I'm always excited to see pears because we don't have that many pear trees. Uh, we've got a few more planted now, but uh, yeah, very exciting. Just a few broad beans on here, but I've just planted the uh, autumn broad beans up so that's good and finally our rhubarb has really kicked into life we've got some more um, sweet corn there and a whole range of berries and apple trees so there's a little plaque um, explaining Debbie's scarecrow Votes for Women, 1918 to 2018, 100 years, and it's all in the suffragette uh, colour scheme. Just on the way to Jenny's plot, walking past my plot again, and um, just in case we've had a few people asking how the guttering system is holding up in the heat, and as you can see, it seems to all be holding together quite nicely. So there we go, arriving at Jenny's plot, and well, I am pleased that I got this fine mesh because we are definitely having some significant white fly problems on uh, the uh, brassica bed with the bigger mesh. But I'm quite pleased that I filled all of my potato pots with these spare plants because some of them are growing really quite nicely and we're actually getting some, some harvests off them. So uh, that's pretty good. And uh, again, tomatoes in the old potato pots and uh, they're coming on quite well as well and in theory I will be able to move these into the polytunnel um, and get a bit of a late crop off them so that's good news so I've just planted these broad beans and as I said before these are will crop in late October November time and so that's pretty good they've used up a little bit of space that uh, will need to be freed up in uh, March-April time for the brassicas 
um, and there's not many crops you can put in really and get a harvest uh, and have it all cleared out by March April so I'm quite pleased to have discovered uh, these broad beans um, I will just pop a little video in now that shows the uh, potatoes that were here before so these were Charlotte and I'm pretty pleased with that that's a nice little crop there uh, from that row um, a double a double row actually but uh, yeah not not too bad and there's a nice mix of sizes as well from some bakers uh, to some uh, nice little salad potatoes and I did pick the first uh, Sapo Kifi uh, which is this batch here uh, that kind of run I don't know, not all the way to the end there, but maybe to about here. And in theory, these are ready now, but looking at the size of those, uh, I'm definitely not going to be picking those. And I don't need to, because uh, I can leave those in the ground much longer. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, this is uh, the area I just harvested. So the Sarpo mirrors are looking okay. I'm very pleased that... Uh, we are getting some rain now because having just harvested some of the potatoes it's uh, very clear how dry, incredibly dry they all are. Apple trees are looking good. We've given these a reasonably good thinning although often when you uh, look again you see things that you could have done a bit more of like these. And I'm hoping that these haven't got grubs because I did spray them Everything else I do on the allotment is organic, but I did decide to spray the apple trees because we lost so many to grubs last year. Not that we'd, we don't mind cutting them open and uh, and taking you know taking the grubs out. Uh, that's fine, but uh, so many of them just drop on the floor um, before they're ready when they've got grubs in them, so they just get wasted. So the leeks are struggling on. This is the main crop of leeks. Um, all the ones on my plot are baby leeks. Although, even though these were planted really quite late, I'm still getting one going to seed there, which probably means more will go to seed soon. So I lost quite a lot, in fact pretty much all of the sprouts that I put into this little bed here. They were planted very late um, but when I pulled them up none of them had any roots so either the roots rotted or they were eaten by the cabbage root fly. I couldn't see any maggots uh, so I replanted them but none of these brassicas are looking very good because basically it's just been full on drought since they were planted. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether you water them or not, they're just not thriving. Whereas the March planted brassicas are doing absolutely stunning. Um, most of these that are left now are collets. They have got some issues with whitefly, but it looks containable at the moment. And we've got some broccoli in here. This fly just blew in my, flew in my ear then. Um, yeah, and some bits and other bits and pieces, kale and the like. And I've just planted a little bit more kale nero and lots of cabbages in here, which is where the onions were. So it was not a lot of space um, occupied by uh, that massive onion crop. So what have we got here? We've got French beans. Doing very nicely, I'm very pleased with these. Even though we planted half the quantity of beans that we had last year, we still can't keep up with them. Courgettes are doing great, of course. We've only got these four plants really, but uh, that's more than enough for 20 people. Uh, so then we've got the curry, and they are doing very nicely. We've already harvested a few of these. Um, I wouldn't say we've got a huge crop, maybe eight or nine on there so far. And pretty pleased with the intercropped sweet corn. Most of it's done well, a little bit of it, some of the secondary shoots have gone to seed. 
and it is kind of amazing to see <laughs> how they go to seed look really quite interesting um, but uh, that's just the secondaries all the primaries are fine um, and with swift you don't often get a very good uh, harvest of the uh, off the side shoots anyway so very pleased with those so the ones we did on the polytunnel were about three weeks three or four weeks early um, but these are pretty much well they all look ready now to me we've harvested our first crown prince and we've got plenty more crown prince in here crown prince has done the best so far this year um, loads of them in here well loads from our perspective anyway because we don't we don't actually need a huge quantity of squash but um i don't know maybe 10 on there so far and more coming so there we go that's the overview of jenny's plot I'm back um because i just wanted to know has anybody grown malabar spinach this is what it looks like it's a really waxy kind of succulent leaf uh, seems to thrive in the polytunnel i'm going to grow it up these uh, strings and get one there and uh, it will uh, apparently go right up into the roof area and this is what i've just harvested just look at these leaves these are pretty gorgeous and uh, one of our friends has tried them cooked she says they're very earthy but lovely so uh, yeah very interested to know what people think of Malabar's hope you enjoyed that quick video um, tour around the, all the plots and uh, yep I'll see you soon